I live with 50 HP. Hey, GG's, bro. On the <laughs> What a final scenario. Sing, 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 sing. Mongrel, one of the most influential faces in Fortnite. From dominating tournaments and uploading super viral content to then suddenly disappearing. Where did he go? And why do I think he's coming back? To answer this, we need to go back to the very beginning. Kyle Mongrel Jackson has been playing games his entire life. Playing games such as Halo and Call of Duty competitively when he was only nine years old. Even at this early age, he showed incredible talent, topping many public leaderboards. It was at this time that the battle royale genre began taking the gaming world by storm. And Mongrel already excelling, jumped into H1Z1 and later PUBG honing his skills as one of the most aggressive and dominant fraggers on any island. While in the early days of Fortnite, most players saw building as a bit of a novelty, throwing up a wall to block a few shots or building a one by one to camp in, Mongrel recognized its true potential. He began to change how people saw and played Fortnite. However, in the early days, this was often met with ridicule rather than respect. And in the beginning, many people actually made fun of Mongrel for how he played. Oh, ready? What the f man? My 90s are bot, man. <laughs> Pros and viewers often said he was trying too hard and he was doing too much. A lot of professionals even thinking that building and editing as much as he did was only to style on bots. Mongrel didn't care. He continued to hone his skills and quickly became one of the best builders in the game. He would upload highlights and stream all his games and very quickly began to gain a lot of attention. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. interview with the BBC in April of 2018, one of the biggest news publishers in the world, highlighting his introduction into competitive gaming and incredible skill at Fortnite. Kyle Jackson is so good at Fortnite that he's been signed to play with a team of professional gamers. Mongrel's reputation and subsequently his content was booming. By the end of 2018, he was averaging over 7,000 viewers on Twitch, pulling in millions of views with every YouTube video and created some of the most memorable content of early Fortnite. What? Oh! <laughs> what a f Thanos in the end. Sing, 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 sing. Oh. Hey, GG's bro. Good fight, man. I really like having a balanced fight. GG. Everything was looking up for Mongrel. He began to become one of the most feared and respected players in the game. Those who originally made fun of him began to realize he was the future of Fortnite. This was before the days of Cash Cups and FNCS. He would upload videos of him dropping 30 and 40 bombs in public matches, as well as popping off in scrims. But how could you truly prove you were the best? There was one tournament every single week that had the entire community watching. Friday Fortnite, a 2v2 kill race, and no one was better at dropping big games than Mongrel. Dead! Yes! I got both kills! He's on me, I'm editing. Dead. I killed one. No way. was however only one thing that could stop mongrel his age at this point in fortnite the competitive age limit was 16. he was only 13 going on 14 meaning he could not compete in any of the skirmishes or official fortnite tournaments left to continue grinding pub kill races and smaller third party tourneys mongrel did not let this stop him he would take any chance to prove he had what it took to be on top often challenging the biggest pros to 1v1s. The 
pro community was waiting and even fearing the day when players like Mongrel, Mr. Savage, Benji Fishy, and so many more could be unleashed into official tournaments. And they didn't have to wait much longer. Not only would Fortnite announce they would be lowering the age limit to compete to 13, they would reveal the biggest online tournament in gaming history, the Fortnite World Cup. Dead, dead, dead. On the <laughs> this was everything Mongrel had been waiting for. The chance to finally prove he was the best of the best, and it didn't take long. Alongside Mitro, they would play second in the first week of duos, qualifying themselves straight to New York. However, despite incredible duo placements in the qualifiers, Mongrel was struggling in solos. When the final week of solos came around, he had one final chance to make it. A lot of people counting him out with one final game, he pulled off one of the greatest clutches in Fortnite history. He's saying just ahead, just out of sight. Does the player see him? I don't think so. The drop in. Gets the shot off and gets the elimination. Mongrel literally putting on a clinic of why you need to pay attention to what what's is going this? on. Everybody Are you kidding me? Just fell. Picks up three balls. Launch pad. He's going to launch pad off. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? 13 eliminations. There's still four players left, including him. Add it down. No way. Are you doing this right now, Mongrel? No way. Top three situation now. Going to get the time for the, for the minis. And now reloading the double RPG as well. Zuer is going to go down in another one. Mongrel. Bro, are you Stop. kidding me? He finally did it. The grind paid off. He was given his chance to compete and prove everyone who doubted him wrong. But it wasn't over yet. Making it to World Cup was one thing. Now he had to try and win it. All the way above him, knocks the structure down, and the player does manage to catch himself and maintain the high ground positioning here. We have some great players still left in this game, but Mongrel with four eliminations is looking for number five, and that was on Nate. We're now down to the final moments, top five monster. He has to fully commit there. Those are the maps that he needs. He's still in the game here. He's going to go all the way forward, and that's a trade off. Oh. With the plug on on to the face here. Huge elimination on Takamura. We're into a 1v1v1v1 one 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 one. top four players now. Mongrel in the ultimate low ground. Going up against the player. It's going to be Boga. The game one winner will not be enough against Mongrel, who does get picked quite a bit. He loses a lot of HP. No more build, but the victory royale goes to the veteran song. A very impressive 13th in solos and 6th in duos made him the most consistent World Cup player across both game modes, taking home a clean $375,000. With World Cup over, a new era of competitive Fortnite would begin. The Fortnite Championship Series, and a switch from duos as the competitive team game mode to trios. Mongrel and Mitro had no intention of splitting, so it was about finding a third player who could match their skill and passion. Enter Benji Fishy, and the formation of one of the most legendary teams in Fortnite, MMB. No. Dead. Nice! Wow. Let's go! Hit not! No. UMP illusion son! Dead! Not! Nice! <laughs> this team would absolutely dominate Trio FNCS, coming second, second, first, and first in the qualifiers, taking home over $100,000 each before the grand finals even started. With these incredible placements, the trio was the clear favorite to take home the $480,000 first place prize. However, the finals did not go to plan. Where did that kid just go? What? It's invisible! What? The mecha is invisible for me! Against the mechs, there was little even Mongrel, Mitro, and Benji could do, and they ended up placing 10th in the grand finals. Despite this disappointing finish in the finals, the trio live streaming every single tournament saw Mongrel's Twitch and YouTube explode, pulling in almost 30,000 average viewers in the month of September, 
peaking at over 75,000 viewers, all while his videos would pull in millions and millions of views. Mongrel would continue on this path of putting up solid placements all while streaming and creating content on everything he played, placing second in squad FNCS, 15th in duo FNCS, and 26th and 16th in solo FNCS. There had now been five FNCSs, and many people began to question Mongrel's position as one of the best players in the world as he was yet to win a championship. With the reintroduction of trios in Chapter 2 Season 4, many expected Mongrel, Mitro, and Benji to reform and run it back again, this time claiming the crowns that were rightfully theirs. However, in a decision that shocked many, Mongrel and Mitro decided to pick up Taysen, the winner of solo FNCS, but a still relatively unknown face in the scene, as he did not even compete in the World Cup. The main reason for this pickup was the fact that Mongrel and Mitro having more than enough firepower needed an IGL, a player to tell them what to do and bring a smarter and more controlled approach to the game. This made sense in theory, but in game, however... Oh, Taysom, we're not hearing many comments from the little IGL dude. Yeah. Oh, what are you guys doing, man? What are you doing? I need some comms, though. No, no, we're not even saying anything. Yeah. yeah of course, you interrupted middle zone. Sorry, we're Just not really IGL, bro. Not an IGL, sorry. Same. Okay. From these clips alone, you would think there is absolutely no chance that this trio would pull off one of the most memorable FNCS wins ever. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Is it nice enough? Let's go! Mongrel, Mitro, and Taysen found themselves in first place by over 60 points with only four games remaining. The grand final was all but over until Thomas HD, Anas, and Flick decided to change things up, switching their drop spot to begin contesting Mongrel's trio. This would be disastrous. The team would begin struggling, placing 32nd, 21st, and 31st in the next three games. This would see their lead cut down to only 20 points going into the final game of the tournament. At this point, there was only one team that could beat them, Janus, Andalex, and x -Sweezy. With a very good chance that if they go to Stark Industries and go down, they will lose their lead, they made a bold and incredibly controversial decision. They landed on Andalex's team, knowing that if they lose this spawn fight, they will have thrown their tournament. This right here, this engagement going down in sweaty sands is going to determine the FNCS Trio's Grand Championship. It's going to be crazy. Luckily for them, their gamble pays off. Scared to take an all-out engagement on foreign territory, they instead managed to hold down Janus, Andalex, and x -Weezy, securing Mongrel's first ever FNCS win. Mongrel finally had his FNCS crown. He was one of the most popular creators on the game. What could go wrong? Sadly, after this FNCS win, Mongrel would struggle to continue this same level of domination. Instead of battling for first, he would now struggle to even make the grand finals. He would also begin to stream and upload less and less, going entire months without posting any content. But why? What happened? One theory is that his insane mechanics and aggression was no longer enough. Fortnite competitive was progressing and you could no longer get by off sheer mechanics alone. This is supported by Taysen, who despite winning FNCS, instantly split with Mongrel and Mitro, going on to have the most decorated career of any player after the World Cup. While this might be the case, I would argue that this is due to a bigger reason, a lack of passion. There is no reason Mongrel could not have applied himself to VOD reviewing, working with coaches, and understanding the game as it progressed. He chose not to. His reasons for this were only left to guess, the diminishing prize pools, Fortnite removing many of the fun items. People have even argued it's because Fortnite removed the spaz. You have to remember, at the end of Chapter 3, Mongrel had now been grinding the game almost every single day for over four years. 
he started playing seriously when he was 13 and was now approaching 18 years of age. He does have brief periods of returning full of motivation and optimism, but sadly it rarely seems to last. It makes sense, his priorities shifted. After a long absence on social media, Mongrel began posting about his health, fitness and travel journeys. While many supporters were happy to see Mongrel growing up, many wonder if he'll ever return to the game. While he's maintained a presence doing promotions for FaZe and playing in several smaller tournaments, at this point in time, it does not look like he will be returning to Fortnite. As for what he's up to currently, he just managed to make more than double his entire earnings in Fortnite in a single day, when he was the overall winner of the Bored Ape Yacht Club's most recent competition, Dookie Dash. Mongrel set the best run on the game, earning himself the key which he went on to sell for 1,000 Ethereum, or 1.6 million US dollars. To put that into perspective, Mongrel's official earnings from Fortnite sits at just over 700,000 US dollars. While you could point to this and say, oh, that's why he quit, he doesn't need the money anymore, I think anyone who has followed Mongrel's journey and career knows that it was never about the money. It was about competing. It was about winning. So where does that leave us now? Will Mongrel return to Fortnite? I would honestly say most likely, but will it be to compete and stream every tournament, uploading regular videos? Probably not. I'm sure he will jump on for a new season or big update, but his last YouTube upload was February 1st, and he's only gone live three times so far this year. I could be wrong though. He has never made an official retirement post. He clearly has the talent and passion to make it happen. If Mongrel returns to competitive Fortnite, the community will welcome him back with open arms. He has created some of the most legendary content on the game and is undeniably one of the all-time greats.